Hello my royal lovelies, welcome back to the channel and of course welcome to my home. Today we're going to be talking about some European royal news that is really shocking and breaking news. Yesterday Her Majesty uh, Queen Marguerite of Denmark announced during her, her New Year's speech that she traditionally makes, she announced that she is abdicating in January. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of uh, Danish people were not expecting this, or at least not expecting it right now. Um, Queen Marguerite has had a difficult 2023 in terms of she had um, some back surgery, but she recovered from it uh, remarkably well. So people sort of knew that she had a couple of health conditions, that kind of thing, a few health things going on. Uh, but she's she's okay. I mean, she's 83 years young, I should say, uh, but very, very, very much out of the blue. So let's just read and discuss what we know already. And of course, I will uh, link it back to the British royal family and how this may potentially um, affect British monarchs in the future. So, as I said, during the Queen's New Year's Eve speech, December the 31st, of course, uh, she announced that she will abdicate in favour of her son. Uh, and as I mentioned, she's had a few various health conditions over the last few years. So the date that she has chosen to abdicate is January the 14th. 2024. Um, now that is actually her accession day. So she has been on the throne, well she will have been on the throne 52 years to the day, um, obviously following the death of her father, um, Frederick the Ninth's death. So there has been a kind of um, sh schedule I suppose. Uh, the announcement of the abdication was December the 31st, we had a press release from the palace and a press release from the Danish government. On Sunday, January the 14th, this is how it will happen. There will be a Council of State meeting. The Prime Minister will proclaim the change of throne at the Christiansborg Castle. Now, in Denmark, there is not traditionally a coronation. They normally, the monarch goes onto the balcony and uh, the Prime Minister, um, whoever is in charge of the government at the time, kind of announces the change of monarch. So it's not like in Britain where we have the accession and then we have a coronation uh, a year or so uh, after, or in King Charles's case, it was less than a year from when he acceded to the throne. Um, again, I've heard reports that Danish people are generally, uh, I think, supportive of the Queen's decision to step back. Um, mainly because I think they see no practical merit in, in having uh, someone doing the top job, if you like, uh, who maybe feels that it should be handed down. So... What I'm going to do now is actually go to the um, the New Year's Eve speech. Right, so I'm not going to read all of it because it is quite a long message. And you, of course, you can w watch it in Danish. But I do have the English translation in front of me. So she begins by saying, Tonight, I would like to express a very special thank you. Thank you for the warmth and devotion which I and my family have received throughout many, many years. In two weeks' time, I have been Queen of Denmark for 52 years. Such an amount will leave its mark on anybody, also on me. The time takes its toll and the number of ailments increases. One cannot undertake as much as one managed in the past. In February this year, I underwent extensive back surgery. Everything went well, thanks to the competent health personnel who took care of me. Inevitably, the operation gave cause to thoughts about the future. Whether now would be an appropriate time to pass on the responsibility to the next generation. I have decided that now is the right time. On the 14th of January 2024, 52 years after I succeeded my beloved father, 
I will step down as Queen of Denmark. I will hand over the throne to my son, Crown Prince Frederick. Tonight, I first and foremost would like to express my thanks. Thank you for the overwhelming warmth of support which I have received during all these years. Thank you to the changing governments with whom the collaboration always has been rewarding. And thank you to the Parliament who have always vested their confidence in me. Thank you to the many, many people who on special occasions and in everyday life have embraced me and my family with kind words and thoughts, turning the years into a string of pearls. Support and assistance which I have received throughout the years have been crucial to the success of my task. It is my hope that the new King and Queen will be met with the same trust and devotion which have fallen to my lot. They deserve it. Denmark deserves it. I will conclude my New Year's address in my usual manner. Right, so I think the style of the Queen of Denmark is very, very different to that of uh, the late Queen Elizabeth II and indeed King Charles. I think um, the Danish monarchy seems very much less formal, if you like, than, than, the, than the British monarchy. And I think they sort of see... Um, no issue with this notion of abdication, which I still think is very much a dirty word when it comes to the British monarchy. I think very much British monarchs see um, being, well, see the throne and the crown, the position of sovereignty as something that is for life. Therefore, it doesn't matter at what point in life you take it on, that you will effectively die a reigning sovereign. Uh, in the UK, we have lots of things in place. We have um, the Regency Council, the Regency Act, which basically covers most situations where, you know, if a sovereign was incapacitated, um, absent, i.e. if they were away for a great amount of time, although that doesn't usually happen these days, that kind of harks back to a time when, uh, you know, a, a sovereign might go to war and they, they may have, you know, months away or in the um, in the early part of, of Her Majesty's reign, um, when they went on foreign tours for six months at a time, uh, the late Queen Mother would, would often act as temporary regent in, uh, in Her Majesty's absence. Um, so... Yes, there are provisions for a monarch not being sound of mind, being absent, or of being too ill to perform duties if the body uh, is too ill. So in the UK, most circumstances are covered. There is not a provision for old age, however. So effectively, there is no sort of regency clause, if you like, for retirement. And it looks very much like the Queen of Denmark is opting for a retirement. She's 83 years old and, you know, she wants to enjoy uh, the the latter part of her life um, free of the incumbencies of being sovereign. I don't think, like I say, that is something that is going to be applicable to the British monarch. I think King Charles III, like his mother, will now pass away as a sovereign. I do not see King Charles III stepping back and abdicating. Abdication is still a dirty word. Um, and although the monarchy survived the abdication of Edward VIII, um, I think very much that was in part to the fact that, you know, he was basically exiled and almost cut off from the royal family, effectively. Um, and, and of course, the, the line of succession did not change. Um, Queen Elizabeth II would always have become monarch, admittedly later um, than what she did. But the monarchy did survive. And, but I still think it's just sort of a dirty word, a dirty notion here in the UK. So I can't say, uh, for those of you, you know... <laughs> hoping that we're going to see a King William and a Queen Catherine anytime soon. That is very, very, in my opinion, unlikely to happen. So yes, I think attitudes to the throne are very, very different with 
sort of European monarchies as opposed to the British. I think the British see it very much as a role, uh, a duty for life, something, uh, you know, a crown or a throne. The attitude is that a crown or the throne is not something to just be discarded as and when you see fit. And I think the public in Britain sort of expect that of their sovereign. However, that's not to say that it is necessarily the right thing to do. It's just this is the way that we operate here. But abdication is more common around the world. And this is what the Queen of Denmark has chosen to do. And at large, it seems like the Danish public are supportive of such a move. Um, so there will, of course, with any change of monarch there comes changes of titles and styles so it is now uh, at this moment of making the video unconfirmed what queen marguerite will be known as it has been said that she will retain potentially uh, the style of hm her majesty but that is kind of unusual because if we if we kind of look at what abdication is, abdication is meaning that you are no longer a monarch, you are no longer a sovereign. So to retain any sort of title or style that includes HM, Her Majesty, would be highly unusual in terms of abdication. I'm not entirely 100% sure what the rules around abdication are in Denmark, um, but when we look at what happened, for example, in the UK, when Edward VIII abdicated, he was no longer to be referred to as an ex-king. Um, so even if you look at, for example, how the Pope uh, was styled when he effectively abdicated, uh, Pope Emeritus, um, can I see her being known as Queen Emeritus? I mean, I mean it's an option but I kind of don't think so. I think abdication means completely renouncing any notion of being sovereign. So that leaves a few things open. I'm still not discounting Queen Emeritus. It could potentially happen. Also, what's been pitched and spoken about is maybe Queen Mother. But then again, I don't think any any anything with Queen in fits with the abdication. Of course, rules can be changed. Uh, rules can be updated, so we could still see her being referred to as Queen Mother. She is the mother of the king and she was a queen, but the notion of abdicating kind of doesn't necessarily fit with, again, her being referred to as queen, but we will see. Rules can be changed. She could, of course, uh, go back to being Princess Marguerite of Denmark, um, or, I mean, I quite like how Henry the Seventh referred to his mother back in Tudor times, because of course uh, she was not a queen in her own right. He referred to her as my lady, the king's mother. So maybe she could be known as um, Princess Marguerite, my lady, the the king's mother, or something of that notion. So there are of course a few other options as well. Uh, that we'll have to wait and see what is decided upon. But at the moment, nothing has been announced. Of course, uh, Crown Prince Frederick will be known as His Majesty the King, uh, and we think Frederick the Tenth will be his regnal name. Of course, his wife, uh, Mary the Crown Princess, will be known as Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Mary. Um, Christian, His Royal Highness Prince Christian, will then become the Crown Prince, Crown Prince Christian, um, and apparently I do not think the others, any other styles or titles will change. Now, a little bit about Crown Prince Frederick, soon to be king, and he has hit the headlines in recent months after rumours that the married father of four had an, an alleged affair so Frederick, who, with his wife, Princess Mary, for 23 years, was spotted enjoying an evening with Genevieve Casanova, that's a name, uh, during which they strolled in the park, went to an art exhibition and had a meal 
together uh, while watching flamenco. Sounds like a lovely evening, my loves. Uh, while the royal household refused to comment on photos of the pair together, Genevieve issued a public statement denying any kind of romantic relationship and called the rumours malicious. So, despite the swirling uh, rumours, um, obviously this announcement has been made. So, nothing is confirmed. We have, of course, the denial um, from Genevieve. Uh, so, anyway, it's it's just a little bit of scandal, a little bit of news. But I kind of don't... I mean, who knows? Who knows what is going on? But what does remain obviously true... Um, and quite apparent is that uh, the Queen of Denmark has faith in her son and that what is swirling around with regards to the rumours has not stopped her from obviously naming him her successor, if you like. With the abdication will come, of course, the final European uh, female sovereign for now. Now, there will be future female sovereigns coming up if you like, in future years. But at the moment, uh, there will be no female reigning sovereigns in their own right uh, from the abdication date in Europe. Now, of course, with a change of sovereign also comes a change of status. So, for example, uh, when now meet, well, let's just say William and Catherine, uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales in the United Kingdom are meeting the new King and Queen of Denmark, they will have to bow and curtsy to the new King and Queen. This is protocol. It's normal within royal families to do that towards each other. Um, and of course, William and Catherine will be very graceful and elegant in doing so. They will have no issue. There is no slight involved. I've seen it mentioned uh, on Twitter or X, X, as it's now known, that um, there's going to be a big fuss made. No, William and Catherine will take it in their stride. The Prince and Princess of Wales know the score and they know that one day when they are king and queen, uh, you know, they will be the equals of Frederick and and Mary. Uh, and also, you know, people that that, for example, might not uh, bow and curtsy to them will do so when they are king and queen. Let's not forget that Crown Prince Frederick is a lot older than than William. Uh, so William and Catherine will get it when they do in their own time. Right, a little bit uh, about my outfit today. I am, of course, wearing the Girls of Great Britain uh, tiara. I'm wearing one of Queen Victoria's bow brooches and I am, I've teamed it, a, a rather unusual combination. I've teamed the tiara with a bloom, a hat from Bloomingdale's. It's a vintage hat uh, and it's got on the label, a, a very authentic vintage label. Um, it was purchased in Bloomingdale's from New York. So uh, a very sort of high-end department store, which I felt was rather fitting for January. An interesting combination, but... What do you think? Let me know <laughs> your thoughts on the outfit. So that brings me to the conclusion of this video. We will obviously get further details as details come out and I will update you as and when they do. So I guess what I want to know in the comment section is your thoughts and feelings regarding abdication. Just because something is acceptable in one country doesn't necessarily mean that it's acceptable or going to happen in another. To summarise, I don't think that we are going to see this kind of abdication um, coming over to the UK. I don't think it's something that's going to set a precedent here in the UK. What's good for one, not, not necessarily good uh, for another. And I think in the UK, like I said before, we hold that level of service and duty right till the end um, as something that's quite valuable. We do not see monarchy or the act of being sovereign as something disposable to just, you know, pass off whenever you don't want to do it anymore. Uh, it's something that we see very much for life. Unless, of course, you're a sovereign that's basically your hand is forced, as in Edward VIII's case. Uh, I'm sure he would not have abdicated had he not been pushed by government and family pressure to do so. Um, so let me know your thoughts and comments regarding the abdication. 
If you are Danish, let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about Queen Marguerite abdicating? She's been on the throne a very long time, so it will be a big change. And of course, uh, Crown Prince Frederick's attitude, interests are very, very different. And let's not forget Queen Marguerite did make a few changes uh, to styles and titles, causing quite a big fracas within the Danish royal family. In re I think it was just, was it this year or last year, uh, when she stripped some of her grandchildren of their prince uh, and princess styles and titles. So, um, you know, was she perhaps readying or kind of shoring up the Danish monarchy for how she felt it should go in the future? Maybe that is a distinct possibility, but let me know your thoughts and comments. Right, thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.